everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time. And one of the comments that I always hear is, you make it look so easy. Well, I think it is, and I wanna show you just how easy it can be. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques and put them together and teach you how to make your very own jewelry. If you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. All right, so to make our piece today, we're gonna to be starting with soft flex. Now, I really do believe that the better jewelry is created with good foundation, and you cannot get any better than soft flex. They have the best flexible beading wire. It's never gonna break on you. It's gonna last a lifetime, and it has the beautiful flow to it. And that's one of the most important things. When you buy that really, really inexpensive stuff, sure, you save money, but it just doesn't have that nice drape. So do spend your money on your foundation and you will find that you'll have a lot better jewelry. So we're gonna be using the uh, Softlex Medium today. I also have an assortment of semi-precious stones. And this is our green silk quartz. There's gonna be three different kits available, but this one, of course, is one of my favorite color combinations. So we've got the green silk quartz and we have some uh, wood beads here. And I believe these are, are the uh, gray. And then I'm gonna be using some eight aught seed beads and this is sort of a, a nice brownie sort of tone. And then I have some little rope spacers and I've got some jump rings and a lobster clasp and I've got some crimp tubes. Now, I always like to use these tubular ones. I don't like the round ones. I don't feel like they work very well. So make sure you buy good quality um, crimp tubes and I'll make sure to put a link to that on the um, video so that you know where to find those ones. We're also gonna be using a closed ring today. And we're also going to be using crimp covers. I get a lot of requests asking how to use these properly. Now I do have to say that on a crimp cover you get what you pay for. <laughs> I have some inexpensive ones on the website and although they do work but you, you know you have to kind of manhandle them a little bit to get them to work nicely. These ones are a lot more expensive but they're a whole lot easier to work with so as always I don't know I just find that things that are a little bit better quality are easier to work with. And we also have a little set of um, small bead caps. So as far as tools today, we're gonna to be using our crimping tool. We've got a set of pliers, bent chain nose pliers, and a cutter. And that's about it, so let's get started. All right, so I've cut my soft flex, and now I'm just gonna start putting my beads on. So I'm gonna take one of my semi-precious stones, and then I'm gonna put on one of my little rope spacers, and then a piece of wood, and a rope spacer, and then another semi-precious, and a rope spacer, and I'm just gonna keep repeating that pattern until these are all gone, and this just takes literally seconds to get on here. Now this necklace, um, my one of my staff members, Lori, she's made a couple of them, and she's the one that gave me the idea. I don't always come up with everything that I make. So she, uh, I think she found this on Pinterest. You know, sometimes it's okay to take a little bit of inspiration from Pinterest and then make it your own. So um, she's made these in eight millimeter and in six millimeter, and I like both. So this is eight millimeter today, but you can definitely experiment and play around a little bit because uh, this is just, you know, a basic sort of pattern. So you just have to make sure that you are following that you're putting in your um, spacers in between. And we've got our semi-precious every other one because it's really easy, especially for me right now while I'm talking and <laughs> trying to do two things at once. Um, you know, it's always easy to make a mistake. So it, you can quickly change this if it wasn't right. If you messed up and you put the wrong bead in, you could easily just take it off because we're, we're just putting them on right now. We're, they're not going to be affixed or anything for a little bit here. So we're just at the end here. My last couple. And you can see how quickly this is coming together. Okay. And our final semi-precious bead. So now we've got our little strand of beads all on there. Now, if you thought that this was too much, like maybe you're a really tiny person and you wanted to have just a little bit less, you could take off the last couple here. You could just do that many. I think Lori actually makes hers a little bit smaller, 
but I added a little bit more. So you can totally customize this and make this your own. All right, so now we're gonna add our bead caps on either end. So just slide those on either end and make sure that you do that before you move on. All right, one of the other tools that I forgot to bring out was one of these little alligator clips. These are really great when you're making this kind of a necklace or bracelet because it stops your beads from falling off. So I'm gonna pop that on one end. And now I'm just gonna start putting on my eight aught seed beads. So I'm gonna put on a total of about seven inches of these uh, seed beads on each side. Um, you'll have enough to have a little bit larger. I think these will go up to about a 22 inch length. So if you have a small neck, just don't add as many beads or maybe you want it a little bit longer and you can go for the full length. This is a fully customizable necklace and you can make it your own by just adding or subtracting some of the beads. So I do find the easiest way to put these on is just by using my soft flex like a little needle. I find if you actually pick one up and then try to manhandle it and get it into the right place and then pop that on, it just takes forever. So just quickly scoop them up by using the end like a little bit of a needle. So I am going to just continue on and put seven inches of these on either side and then I will be right back with you. All right, so now I've got all of my beads on and I've got all of my eight aught my Yuki seed beads on there so you can see all the length that's been created. So if you wanna make this a little shorter, just put a little fewer of the beads on. So now we're gonna put this little alligator clip back on one side. Now we do sell these in the um, web store. If you don't wanna buy them, you can always just use another, like a bullnose clip, or you could use a piece of tape. I've just used some painter's tape sometimes, but this really does come in handy for this next part because the last thing you want these to do is come flying off after you've taken all that time to put those on there. Okay. So right now I'm gonna take one of my crimps and I'm gonna run that on the end and then I'm gonna bring the very end back through. Now I wanna be mindful of where that end is going. I don't wanna have it twist over like that. So what I do is I grab hold of the end so that I can keep control of it and then I pull that up. So I wanna make sure that I'm leaving enough um, on the end here. I wanna leave about a quarter of an inch or so and I have to leave enough to be able to put my crimp cover on there. So I'm not gonna leave a big loop, but it's not gonna be a super small one. So now when you're using these crimp pliers, they have two holes in them. We're gonna start with the innermost one, which kind of looks a little bit like a taco. And then we've got the other one that looks like an oval. So I'm gonna take the innermost one and put it right over top. And you can see that I'm still holding on to that so that I know that these have not crossed over. I wanna make sure that my entire crimp is covered up. If you only get part of it in there, you're gonna have a crimp that fails. So right before I crimp, I sort of separate them so that I know that these are gonna create that little parallel channel in there, and I give it a good scrunch. Scrunch is my technical term. And now I'm gonna take those off, and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, and I'm gonna use the outer one and give it a really good solid smush down there. So then I'm gonna come in with my pliers and give that one more little crimp on the same side. If you go on top, then it's gonna open it back up. So you wanna make sure you're just kind of staying where you were and give it another good squish. Now you can come in with your cutters and you can run your cutter down there so you can get it nice and close and you can trim. Now I know that will make a lot of people afraid, but if you have done your crimping properly, that will not come apart. So don't leave one of those little tails because they just get in the way and they niggle in the back of your neck and they're just kind of uh, pointless. So that's how you do a, a good crimp. So now we want to put on one of our crimp covers. So I like to sort of start with it in my fingers and get it lined up and I wanna have that crimp right inside there. So you can just see that it's tucked inside nice and neat. Okay, now that I've got that seated nice inside there, I'm gonna come in on the sides and I'm gonna give that a little push towards each other. So it takes a little bit of work. Now you can see that I didn't do it in one big massive push. I gave it just a little bit of um, push until it sort of started to close up. And now you can see that I'm left with a little bit of a gap there and that's exactly what I want. These will never line up. If you just give it one big uh, crimp like that, it's gonna end up being sort of flat. So I get it to the point where it's leaving that little bit of a gap, and then I'm gonna come on top, and I'm gonna give it a little tiny baby squish. So sometimes it goes where you don't want it to go, so you have to be the boss of it. So I'm gonna give it a little squish that way, and then I come in on the other side. And I just keep going back and forth until I get something that I like. Now it will flatten them out a little bit, but I find if you do it on both sides, you can't really notice. And there we go, we have a nice little crimp cover. So I think that's the best way to approach it, is try not to do it in one great big huge 
um, massive push. Just do little tiny bites and try to keep it in the round as much as you can. So now we can take off our alligator clip on the other side and we can push these down. Now one of the things you want to make sure when you are using Softflex is that you don't tighten things up too much because you can see how rigid that is, this is. I want to make sure that it's got that flexibility which makes it lay nicely on the neck. So the way that we're going to do that is by repeating what I did at the beginning by putting on my crimp, pulling the end through, and then I want to leave enough room. So I don't want to have a great big huge loop like this. I'm going to pull back a little bit, but I want to make sure that I can move that crimp up. Because we're going to be covering this with a crimp cover, it takes up a little bit extra room. So you can see how much um, room that actually takes up. So you want to leave enough there that that won't crack any of your beads. So I've made sure that these are still parallel in there. I'm going to come in with my innermost one and give it a good crimp. Turn it 90 degrees and then come in and crimp that again, leaving it in the same position. I'm then going to come in with my pliers and give that another good crimp. So then I come in with my cutters and trim that off nice and close. And now we're going to put on our second crimp cover. So I just sort of put it in by hand, make sure that it's where I want it. And then I'm going to come in. I always have to come in on weird angles when I'm filming because normally I would come in like this, but then you can't see anything. So I do it on these strange angles and then it makes it a little bit awkward and they don't always work out the best, but I want you to be able to see. So this one probably is going to be a little easier. You can see I'm giving it squishes and that one came pretty close. So I can just come in on one side and then on the other and I just keep going back and forth. Little tiny baby squishes. I am not squishing hard at all. Try to be kind when you're doing these kind of things because if you try to do it all at one time, you'll end up with something that's not looking right. And I was going to try to adjust that a little bit by coming in on top. But sometimes if you do that, it can kind of go awry. So you know what? I'm just going to leave it because that actually looks fine. All right, so now we're going to finish off the rest of this necklace. So I always like to use the smallest and strongest jump rings that I can. And these are a 18 uh, gauge and they're a four millimeter. So they're small and they are strong. So I'm going to get a good hand grip on these because they can be a little hard to open and close. And I'm going to run that through the end of my soft flex and then I'm going to add my lobster clasp. Now I'm going to do that up and I want to jiggle it back and forth until it's nicely tightened up there and you'll usually hear a little bit of a click. And I'm going to repeat on the other side but on this one I'm going to attach a closed ring. I always find it a little bit easier to, um, goodness these are so tightly done up that I can't even see that. There we go. <laughs> well, I only have one eye that's working right now. So um, so this is a closed jump ring and I find it a lot easier to be able to put your lobster clasp through a closed jump ring than try to put it through just a tiny little uh, jump ring like we've got on the end here. So this one I just kind of have to boss back into place. There we go. And now you can see when I do this up, it gives it a nice finished look and it's got a nice place for it to do up in. So I'm going to show you all three uh, colorways that I've got. All right, so here's the three different colorways. This one is a beautiful blue Picasso Jasper and I've mixed it with the gray wood. And this one is the uh, green silk quartz. And this one I believe is the red silk quartz. And I, I love all three colors. I love this sort of muted tone. I think they're very flattering to most any um, skin color and I think they just look really, really nice on. So these will be available in kit form. To access the kits, you just go into the drop down menu or the description box below this video. There's going to be a link that will take you directly to my fully secure website where you can choose the one that you like the most. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from everybody, and please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I want to thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.